I guess you won't be going to the West Coast for a while. I said, I just came from the West Coast. Right. So he said, no, 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 with the beef with you and Ray J. So I said, no, I don't have no beef with Ray J. I was just with him last week. Right. So he says, no, he's, he's threatening you online. i like, I have no idea what you were talking about. Right. So a pedestrian on the belt line pulled up their phone and showed it to him. That's, that's, that's how, how you found out about it. it. Yeah. Hey, bro, it just is what it is. Like, it's tough. I get it. It's hard. It's rough for you. Like... I don't know what to tell you. Now, I know we're not all perfect and no one's ever going to be all perfect. That's not what I'm talking about. And I don't think that's even what anyone's looking for or requesting. I think we need to get back to a point where we are seeking for Christ. So, as I said, Jamal Bryant gets called out, uh, threatened even, I believe, by Ray J, his lawyers and everything. And here's this clip we're going to watch Jamal Bryant explain really what went down and how he got called out. And I think his reaction wasn't good. But praise be unto God, you're going to see the other people that were in this room are actually correcting him and leading him in the right way. Which is also another interesting thing to see, considering, like I always say, Jamal Bryan is the pastor in the room, but rarely does it seem that way. And you're going to experience that firsthand here. Let's get into this clip. What went through your head? So I'm walking on the belt line. Okay. I'm walking on the true story. I'm walking on the belt line and people are passing me on the belt line saying, are you okay? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> Somebody else passed me like, man, keep your head up. Wait, so I'm, I was just, like, I'm okay. just walking on the belt yeah, line. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. So it, I'm just thinking people are just greeting me. Right. I get to the end, and uh, this guy I don't know says, man, I guess you won't be going to the West Coast for a while. I said, I just came from the West Coast. Right. So he said, no, 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 with the beef with you and Ray J. So I said, no, I don't have no beef with Ray J. I was just with him last week. Right. So he says, no, he's, he's threatening you online. I'm like, I have no idea what you were talking about. Right. So a pedestrian on the belt line pulled up their phone and showed it to me. That's, that's, that's how, how you it found out about it. it. Yeah. When you saw what he was saying. I was in shock. Okay. What is it that, I mean, what I happened? know you said you were yes. going to stick to the code yes. and the parts, you know, so, it was a safe space. He said, I thought this was a safe space. And if you air the interview in its entirety, there's going to be problems. So yes. Ray J got mad, as he said, uh, the other video we talked about, man, where they were going back and forth, having their conversation. So Ray J apparently gets mad. In that interview, Ray J was kind of saying some things. And on other times he was saying some stuff without saying some stuff. So there could have been some stuff he was involved with. Like he said, he was trying to stick to truth, but he was trying to stick to the money. And there's other people who were sticking to the money. So he can't go the other way. So it seemed like he was really in a pickle. Um, and with that interview getting aired and see receiving more than 200,000 views and counting most likely since it aired, yeah, I guess Ray J came out and wasn't okay with it because there's some things and you're getting ready to hear the lawyers uh, come on set to tell Jamal Bryant, this has to be cut, but let's keep this going. So a week ago, I'm in LA and uh, I bring him on to record the podcast. In the middle of the podcast, he says something that I, I will leave. He says something right? that his lawyers came on the set of us shooting saying that this is broaching something that has legal ramifications. Okay. I then say in the middle said, Hey man, this is a live to cut podcast. I don't do editing. Right. But this is my guy. Right. And I don't want him to have to pay money. I don't want to be liable. I tell you what, I'm going to edit this part, but anything else he says, right. We gone. Because he's been warned by his lawyers. Right. Already, yes. So he knows yes. that. Yes. Right. Okay. We go on and record. At the end, Ryan, of us recording, he's like, man, I really needed this. I'm going to come back to church. I've been out of church for a long time. I need to get right with God. I want to do a part two. I said, oh, that'd be great. Right. So I said, listeners, you all heard it here first. Ray J wants to do a part two. We're going to bring him back next year. Mm -hmm. He says, no, I want to do a part two before <laughs> Christmas. Okay. Bet. Yeah. We hug it up, dap it up. Yeah. Go our way. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. A week later, I'm like 50 cents with May Floyd Mayweather. I woke up. What did I do? Jamal Bryan doesn't realize that he's meshing his audiences. He's meshing his crowd. And I'm not saying Ray J's some terrible person, but 
make no mistake, he was doing that interview for the ratings and the views that it would get. So when Ray J's talking about his moral and ethical challenges in that original interview where he didn't know should he follow the truth or the money, and I was talking about how that's difficult to share with somebody like Jamal Bryant, you ain't really going to get good advice because he's someone who's probably also struggling between following the truth and the dollar. So he was following the dollar and thinking to get this on here. You talk about these things. These people have a different life. They live a different world. I know these celebrity pastors want to be celebrities, but you are not in that world. Yeah, there's some dark stuff some of them celebrity pastors be doing, but it ain't. For the majority, it ain't really reached the darkness that's going on in the celebrity world. In Hollywood. In the industry. Hey guys, real quick, if you click the link in the description, it'll take you to Amazon where you can get your own copy of my book, Matters of Life, True Stories of Pain, Forgiveness, and Resilience. This book is filled with true stories from real people's lives, giving you the opportunity to connect, relate, learn, and overcome whatever you may be dealing with in life. So click the link and let me know what you think. That's just what I'm saying, man. I just think that, hey, I like what Jamal Bryant's doing there. You have your podcast, you have everything. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of people have started up with these conversational podcast shows and it's a good thing. Get these conversations out. People can learn from them. People can, you know, get information from them, whatever the case may be. But as a pastor, sometimes you got to be very careful what you're bringing in because what that can warrant, you don't know who these people are attached to. You know, we got to use some of that wisdom that's given to us by Christ. I'm not saying we shove people off and pee people away, but you're going to hear, man. These other people are even going to say it. These people that Ray J are around and the people that are connected to Ray J, you may think you good and you can handle Ray J, but you don't know who works for and with him, who you may not be able to handle. And at the end of the day, you got yourself into it. Let's keep this going. Pastor, yeah, what, what just happened? <laughs> right. So, you know, the threats are, and I'm like, man, I told you I'm going to take this part out. Yeah. So I didn't even know where it was coming from. My next call is from my lawyer who says to me, hey, man, my lawyer friend from L.A. called, do you need more security? Because he's associated. Yeah. Like, do I need security? I, I, I'm not as big as this guy. <laughs> not as big as Big Ray. I'm not as big as Big Ray. But I can handle Ray J. I can handle Big Ray. <laughs> but I can handle Ray J. I don't yeah, need security. <laughs> uh, but it just snowballed and avalanched out of nowhere. And what was really disconcerting for me, drum roll. <laughs> Thank you. Ray J has my number. And that's so my, my, I'm from Baltimore. Call me. So you, you, I, I don't know street beefs through IG. Okay. I don't know what that is. Well, so even if we got an issue, yeah. call me. And have the beef and threat me if my posture was, no matter what you said, I'm still airing it. But if I agreed to the terms mm -hmm. right. in front of your lawyer yeah. on tape, then I didn't know what the beef was. You got the receipts. Yes. Well, do you think that he really is just trying to maybe stir the pot because of this episode just to get so, more attention, more eyes, you. that kind let of thing? Let me help you. That's exactly what's happening. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you shouldn't have gotten yourself involved with these things. But I get it. The ratings and the numbers, you want that. But it's like, what is the purpose of this? He's like, let's be clear. And I like, I know you're a pastor, you have your ministry, but to go onto a podcast, it's like one of these things, you know, that's kind of not like the other. So it's like, how come we how come he's not having conversations with regular people where he can actually show live like counseling where people are giving information he's giving you back why because people probably don't want to watch that of course you want to watch ray j on the screen and this guy here instead you know so it's a ratings and numbers thing but that's when people start treading that thin line bro and this is when things like this happen this is when stuff like this happens you end up getting yourself in mess you know what I mean? I'm from Baltimore. All this. He's a pastor right now. This is the posture of a pastor right here. The, you're, he's too involved with too much drama to be a pastor. Don't let your good be spoken evil upon, bro. Don't give any room for that. <sighs> Let's keep this going, man. So it wasn't even airing this week. I didn't even tell him when it was going to air. Mm -hmm. 
he done done more PR than was necessary. <laughs> yeah. Now you got to get the people what they want. Right. I, yeah, yeah. So we didn't even go over schedule again. This was last Monday. Okay. So I got six or seven shows in the can. Yeah. And in my mind, you got to move your show. You got to move the Ray J show to the front of the queue. I, it wasn't okay. the plan. You got to. In my I mind, people want to know about this election. Right. People's minds is on what's going on with J.D. Vance. Right. To me, it wasn't a good placement the week after election to mm -hmm. put Ray J. Right. Nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. it, you understand? I, I'm, I don't do... I'm not a social columnist. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm not interviewing you about the fight with Diddy's sons. I'm not interviewing you about Nicki Minaj. That's not my platform. So it was ill-timed and ill-fitted, but, you know... Here when is it are. going? When is it right. going to air? When are we going to see it? So, well, it it, it uh, I just think, in my honest opinion, and I'm going to leave it at this, y'all, and check out that full interview um, if you haven't with Ray J and Jamal Bryant. Jamal Bryant, he's got himself in a pickle, potentially, maybe not. You know, lawyers calling out, ask him, does he need security? You know, you never know who's going to come and stuff like that because. Apparently, Ray J said some stuff that maybe could be bad for him. Um, and it's uh, it's just a tough situation, you know, what's happening uh, on all over this platform. But like I say all the time, you know, pray for Jamal Bryan. But anyways, I mean, it's like he uh, is I don't think it's a good posture, man, you know, as a pastor to be involved in this much drama and to be always in the. Uh, inner circles, you know, where you really don't have any business being. Shout out to all my Cowboys fans, even though we keep losing. Uh, but this reminds me of Jerry Jones. If you know, you know, you know, just always being in places that no other GM is. You know what I mean? So it's like, Jamal Bryan, stay in the pulpit and stay out of these situations because you just never know, man, uh, what what uh, what could happen. Um, but, uh, as Nick Cannon said, uh, Forrest Gump being a spiritual movie. And what did we learn from that? Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. That's all I got guys to the next one. I'm out.